Hi and welcome to Car Mechanical and today we're going to have a quick look over VCDS Lite and the kind of things that you can do in there. Now the first thing we need to do is grab our laptop, we're going to plug into the laptop and the car with the engine on. We're going to go to our COM port, test it and save it. It's going to tell us we've got a good connection. We're then going to go into the engine section, it's where most people spend most of their time with VCDS. So we're going to go to Control Module, Engine and select Measuring Block. Now it can take a minute or so to connect, I've sped this up here. But once you're in, go down to measuring block options and I'm going to talk through the different options and things that are going to come up here. Now just to note, one of the things I won't be covering is uh, data login, I'll cover that in a future video because there's a bit more to it. So we'll start and work our way up and we'll go to group one. That one's for engine speed and injection quantity, I think that's from the fuel pump and the coolant temperature. If we go into two, we get the pedal position as I push down on the pedal, you see the revs come up, you see the pedal position change there. If we go to three, we get mass air sensor and the air mass that it's expecting to see and it actually sees in the revs again. If we go to group four, we see things about um, the injection timing. If we go to five, then we see again more about injection. When we go across to six, we can see uh, vehicle speed is parked at the moment when I was doing this. Uh, you can see I'm pressing the pedal and the value changed. That fuel temperature is interesting because of in my other video I've got an issue there, so it might be worth me replacing that temperature sensor. If we look here, this is to do with the actual engine mapping and how much fuel it's putting through, how much it's limiting. Um, we'll come into that in future videos. This one here is kind of irrelevant because I don't have cruise control. Now this is for your manifold pressure, and the next one's interesting is because it's for your turbo pressure. For so we we go to group eleven and we can see the boost it's expecting to see and the boost it's actually seeing and what the N75 cycle is doing. This is incredibly handy if you have boost leak issues. Now not all of these groups I can tell you exactly what they're for so I'm just going to scroll through a couple. 13 is incredibly important if you have it, any kind of rough idle or rough running you have a look at your injection quantities there. Now a couple of these are blank, it goes up to group 25 uh, again, this one is another injection quantity. I don't know if it's the fuel pump. On this one here, not entirely sure. A few of them came up blank. I don't think gave too much information. Then a few of these are ultra-specific things. However, I just wanted to show everyone every group that is available. So I think this one here might be the fuel pump, which is very similar to one that was lower down the group. In. Uh, again, we've got another mass air and duty cycle. I think that's the Uran 75 again, so it's just showing you different uh, relationships there. Again, ignition timing and the values against when things are injected. Uh, pressure bits and pieces. And then the different temperatures that it's reading. I've been incredibly vague on some of those descriptions, but I don't know what all of them are. But I know it is handy to see what is available to you. Now, VCDS Lite only goes to group 25. In the proper version of VCDS, it goes all the way up to, I think it's 100 or so, and there's a lot more options. Okay, so next I'm going to very generally take you around some of the other areas. I'm going to look at airbags first. Um, I'm going to look at the things that I think most people are going to find and have issues with. So on my car at the moment, I've got an airbag light on. I'm completely sure it's from something I dropped under my seat and I knocked the wire in when I got it out. I'm going to try and clear these codes here. And when I try it, VCDS is coming up and telling me that I actually still have these issues present. And when I check on Rostec, everything pretty much leads towards dodgy connections on there. It, I'm pretty sure it's all on one airbag. However, what I need to do is I need to um, reconnect the airbag, take it off and reconnect it, which probably means take the battery off and check. So there's the codes. I'm just going to go through all of these individual sections that you can go through here and just show you what's there. Um, to be honest, a lot of this doesn't mean too much to me. However, it might be helpful for someone watching VAGCOM uh, or VCDS Lite, whatever description you want to use for the program. It has all of these options in there. And if you know what you're looking for, it can give you very specific information. I tend to use everything pretty much on the engine side for performance diagnostics. So that's the airbag stuff done. I'm going to take another quick look as well and go across to um, ABS. So I think with ABS, again, that's probably another area a lot of people will have issues with. I think if I remember looking before, this tells me I might have an issue with the ABS control unit or a speed sensor or the ABS control ring on one of the wheels. Um, I'd have to 
do a quick search. In fact, I'll do that now. And come... Okay, I've done the search, and coming back from that, that seems to be just a general memory storage issue that it's picked up a fork code and it's holding it in VCDS. I don't think there's an ABS issue, so I'm going to move forward. So here you can actually go through and see what everything's doing. It's actually quite handy and interesting because you can do some login, and again, I'll come to login in future videos, but you can see exactly what's going on. No idea why Group 2 thinks I'm going at that ridiculous speed when I start stationary, but you can check through your groups and you can log these things and you can sort of find out if you do have an ABS issue, you can actually pinpoint it to which one you might be having an issue with. And if we go and have a look at some of the other general options that we have in VCDS, um, I think we can have a look at instruments, but it's not too relevant. So I'm just going to have a very quick look there. I'm going to bring those up. Now, some of the measuring blocks take longer to give you access than others. So I think the ABS was pretty quick, but this one's a bit slow. But if we start going through there, it's literally going to show you what you can see on your dashboard. Uh, but again, it might be handy if you want to look for specific or record specific things. I think it only gave me a couple of options, so I decided to bail out and not look too deeply at this one. So if we come out of these options, we'll have a quick look around the top level menu. Now there's some options here for different applications, not really going to use them. Um, you can look at specific control addresses if you don't want to look at all the groups, you want to look at just one thing. You can look at OBD, OBD2 compatibility, which mine isn't because of my car's a KKL connection. So it's going to run through that. Now the thing with KKL and OBD2, OBD2 is miles, miles quicker. One of the issues I have with BCDS Lite is that the resolution, which is how often it's updating all the information, is super slow. Um, so I don't see things as quite as quickly as I'd like. However, information is better than no information. Now that's it for this video. I just wanted to show people where different bits of information were in VCDS Lite. And the next video I'm going to do will be on data logging itself and how to make sense of that information. Now if you think these VCDS videos are handy, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to keep seeing the new videos that come out. And please leave any comments in the comment section below. Also share the video to anyone that you think this is going to help. And as always guys, thanks for watching.